There's a prayer that was put out by the AME Church. And it was originally a prayer for Pentecost regarding the COVID-19. But we haven't really focused on COVID-19 this week. We have focused on the death of an innocent man, George Floyd, who was murdered in cold blood. So this prayer that is going out, I'm asking that it will touch our hearts and spirits. So let us know that even though all hell is broke loose, yeah. that you still sit on the throne. And we're thankful for that. It reads, Eternal God, we give you thanks and praise for the ability we have to still gather together in one place, in one accord, and in one faith. Even as we have dispensed due to the effects of this pandemic, we know that we are still unled. Thank you, gracious God, for your underlying spirit that still binds our hearts together in Christian love. On this day, we ask that you do for us just what you did for the early church at the first Pentecost. Send us your spirit. Send us your comforter. Send us the spirit who comes to cheer and to guide. Grant us fiery tongues so that we might speak out to the symptoms of this world. Tongues that allow us to listen and to be heard with renewed clarity. Grant us fiery tongues, Lord. Endow us with a mighty rushing wind that will move our hearts and hands toward active service. Fill us. Fill us with your vision for this world, so that we might see the world not as it is, but how it can be. We ask you, oh God, to open our hearts, that we might be receptive to the move of the Spirit as it comes. Give us strength and give to us courage, so that we might live as Pentecost people in a time when your underlying Spirit is needed most. Pour out your spirit on all your people this morning so that we might prophesy, see visions, and dream dreams. Hear our prayer, O Lord, as we trust in your spirit who lives and reigns with you and with Christ forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May you let this prayer soak deep down in your spirit this morning to let you know that he is still in control. Amen. Okay.
We're going to be reading the Word of God from the book of Genesis and the Gospel of John. So first we're reading out of Genesis 11, verses 1 through 9. And this chapter begins right after the flood and the spread of the children of Noah over the earth. Now, the whole earth had been in one language and one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Yeah. That's how we came to be where we are today. Now in the Gospel of John, we're going to be reading verses 26 and 27 from the 15th chapter. But when the help comes, say hallelujah to the help. Hallelujah. But when the helper comes, who I shall send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also were bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Hallelujah. And then in chapter 16, we're going to be reading verses 4 through 11. This is Jesus speaking. Come on. Yeah. Listen carefully. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Yeah. That is the word of God for the people of God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the blessed Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord, everyone. We want to continue our worship through giving. If this has not been our worship service, wherever you are, we want to invite you to continue to support uh, the ministry in Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church in San Diego through giving. So we invite you. We have three different ways in which you can share your tithe or your offering. 
I want to say first and foremost to all of our members and some of our potential members that have been donating uh, their time and or their offering to Bethel Church during this time of pandemic. I want to say thank you uh, to all of our members, officers, members, and friends who are helping support this ministry. You can actually give three different ways. The first way that you can give is through the mobile app, Givelify. You can go to your mobile phone or your computer to Givelify app on the website and look up Bethel African Methodist Church of San Diego and you can give however the Lord leads you for our members. I want to encourage you to give a tithe and that's 10% of whatever the Lord has given you. And then give 10% to yourself for systematic savings and live on the 80%. For those of you who may be blessed by this worship service, we are going to continue to bring it to you. We need your financial support. So you can give to the mobile app, Givelify. You can also give online if you go to our website, Bethel, A-M-E-S-D, -E, Sam David.com. You can give online, click the gift tab, and you can also send your tithe offering to Bethel Abbey Church, 3085 K Street, San Diego, California. I'm going to ask for praise and worship if they would give us giving music while you get your tithe and offering together. Come on, continue and worship with us through giving at this time. Praise and worship. Give us giving music.
Lord is worthy to be praised. Father God, in the name that is above every name, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence on this day. Your sons and daughters have come to worship you in spirit and in truth. So, Father God, we have been through a tumultuous week. We thought we had seen a lot when we got hit with a pandemic, but then we seen the murder of a defenseless man by those who are called to serve and protect us. Yes. Once again, Father God, we stand at the crossroads, yes. praying and asking for peace where there is no peace, yes. praying and asking for justice where there is injustice. Yes. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would not just be in this worship service. Yes. This house is on fire because of the presence of your Holy Spirit. But our country is on fire because of racism, classism, sexism. So Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will bring peace and calm in the midst of this firestorm. But we also pray, Father God, for justice. We pray, Father God, that black and brown people we we'll stop dying at the hands of the police. So, Father, we're here to worship you in spirit and in truth. And even this, Father God, I believe that you still are in control. So, Lord God, be with us the rest of the way. Continue to allow your Holy Spirit to rest upon this house and in our hearts. And I pray that whoever is viewing this service, that they would be blessed. Anyone that hears this service, that is not saved, I pray that you would prick their heart, that they may come asking, what must I do to be saved? And for those that are Christian, that they've been walking around talking about their spiritual but not religious, help them get rooted and grounded in a household of faith where they can be preached to and taught the word. So Holy Spirit, I know that you're in the house. Stay with us, Father God, and allow your word to do everything it out to you, and that is not return unto you, Lord, and we'll be careful to give your name praise, to give your name the honor, and to give you the glory. People of God, say amen. 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 My brothers and sisters all over the Christian King today, we're going to be celebrating Pentecost. Yes. In this season, where so much is happening, uh -huh. we certainly need the fire of the Holy Spirit burning uh -huh. in our hearts and minds. Yes. I'm going to say something right now. This is not written down in my sermon, right. but I just feel the need uh -huh. to speak on these things. I've been watching, as many of you have been watching, the news, local news, national news, CNN, MSNBC, and I even looked at a little bit of Fox to hear what they were saying. But it was absolutely absurd to hear the U.S. Attorney and the attorney for that county come forth and say to people and for the last 10 years, or 11 years, black persons have been killed at the hands of the police in Minneapolis. Every year, for the last 11 years, 10 blacks have been killed there. It is ridiculous to see another man saying, I can't breathe. And the police officer that's been charged with the duty of serving and protecting to put his knees on his throat put his hands in his pocket, put more weight that bent down on him while other police officers stood around and watched. If you or I put our knees on a dog's neck, somebody would call the police and stop it and have us arrested. But we have witnessed again a black man killed in America, supposed to be the home of the free. And again, you all are telling black people be patient. Uh -huh. Be patient. Give us time. 
But we're sick and tired of being patient. We're sick and tired of marching. We're sick and tired of the White House, the governor's house, and the state house telling us, be patient, we're gonna handle this. You don't want violence, we're gonna stop perpetuating violence against us. I shouldn't have to be afraid when the police get behind me. Our taxes pay your salary. So my brothers and sisters, I do not, and I am not in favor of burning and rioting. But if we can't get justice any other way, if you refuse to hear us, and if you, can, if, if you continue to allow black and brown people to be killed on the streets, what choice do we have? When they took long guns into the Capitol a couple of weeks ago, all those armed Caucasian men that were armed with weapons in the state capitol, I did not see one sniper on the roof. I didn't see one kid that's fired at them. But when people protest in the street because another black man has been killed, you want to shoot us with bullets. You want to fire the tear gas. Time out for that. So we're going to rise up. We're going to speak out. We're going to speak up. We're going to be in front of the White House. We're going to be in front of the governor's house. We're going to be in front of the mayor's house. And we said, hell no, we will not go. And the same God that delivered the children of Israel is going to be with us. And I want to ask all you police officers a question. It's easy to shoot when it's just black and brown people. How do you feel about firing bullets at those Caucasian brothers and sisters that are also saying, hands up, don't shoot? Walk with me, Holy Spirit, through the rest of this sermon. This morning, there is a word from the Lord in Acts chapter 2. And I'm going to read for your hearing Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sign from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I'm going to read on a little more. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and they were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language, in which we were born, Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phyphia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya, adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this be? Others, Marky said, they are full of new wine. Read for your hearing, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13 from the New King James Version. And I want to take a little bit of your time today. Preach a message entitled, When the Church is on Fire. Yeah. Amen. When the church is on fire. Yes, sir. When the church is on fire. There are many feasts and festivals that are observed by the Jews during the Old and New Testament times. And during these events, the people stopped all their manual labor and devoted themselves totally to these celebrations. 
The accounts of these festivals in the Bible suggest that they included a potluck type of meal, with some parts of the meal reserved for the priests and the rest given to those who gathered at the temple or the altar for worship. Observed with thanksgiving, worship, and joyous feasting. These feasts commemorate, commemorate significant events in Israel's history as God's covenant people. There were three major feasts of the Bible, and they were the Passover feast, to be celebrated when the Lord allowed the angel of death when they were leaving Egypt. They put blood of the lamb on the doorpost and the angel of death passed over all of Goshen. Not one firstborn Israelite was killed, but all of the firstborn males in Egypt died on that night. And so they celebrate the Passover even today the Jewish people still celebrate the Passover. The Feast of Pentecost was the second feast. This was the Feast of Harvest. Pentecost means 50. 50. And this Feast of Pentecost was a harvest festival through which the people expressed thanksgiving to God for the grain harvest and other crops. You can do some study on that. If you read in Numbers chapter 28, you can find the history of the Feast of Pentecost in Numbers 28. Other names by which the feast was known was the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of First Fruits. Early Christian believers experienced the miraculous outpouring of the Holy Spirit while gathered in Jerusalem to observe the Feast of Pentecost. The Lord God had promised the apostles and other disciples that they were to wait in Jerusalem for the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord told them in Acts chapter 1, You've heard from me, truly, John, baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. He went on to tell them that they were going to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And what we will find, my brothers and sisters, if you read closely, Care that the words of the Lord happened exactly like he said would happen. He told them you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Yeah. And that power, and you will also be witnesses to him in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. And so, my brothers and sisters, as these Apostles assembled in Jerusalem. He told them to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And so they took care of some business when they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. And when they returned to Jerusalem, they replaced the trade of Judas with a brother named Matthias. And they stayed in that upper room. And the Bible says that there were some 120 in the upper room. There were the apostles and there were also some sisters in that upper room. And when the spirit blew through the room, I read in several different commentaries, and it says that this 50 days after the Passover Sabbath, the promise of the Holy Spirit would fall on the people of God. Yeah. The Spirit, the Numa, the same Spirit, the same breath that God blew into humankind and made us a living soul 
that same spirit that they have seen blew through the room like a rushing mighty wind. It was not just the kind of wind that blows the trees. It was not just the kind of wind that we feel on our face on a beautiful day. But this fresh wind was the breath of God breathing on all those 120 in the room. And something mysterious happened. They all got filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says that not only was the wind, the wind rushing, and it was mighty, uh, some scholars say that it probably would have sounded like a tornado descending down upon that room. It may have sounded like a locomotive rolling through the room. And Jesus went one step further. Not only did he breathe on them, but then he allowed these tongues to fall upon them. Fiery tongues descended down upon the room and the divided tongues of fire set upon each and every believer and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues. Stick a pen in that for a minute. This speaking in other tongues, my brothers and sisters, was not just random babbling that nobody could understand. I remember years ago I was managing a restaurant and I had some sisters that worked for me and they were sure enough convinced that because I had not spoken in tongues that I could not be a Christian. They tried to beat me over the head and tell me, unless you speak in tongues, you cannot be saved. But when I took them to the book of Romans, where it says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that he died and rose again, that you shall be saved. The thief on the cross next to Jesus who said, when you enter into your kingdom, yeah. remember me. Yeah. And the Lord said, today you will be with me in paradise. Yeah. I don't remember that man speaking in tongues. Yeah. Stephen, as they stoned him, and Paul or Peter would stand, Saul would stand and hold his garments. I don't remember Stephen speaking in tongues, but I do remember him saying, Lord, I want you to receive my spirit. There's so many examples that I can tell you where people have not necessarily spoken in another tongue. And if we realistically go to the word, the Bible in Corinthians says that if there is speaking in tongues in a public setting, and there's no interpreter, shut your mouth and be quiet because it does not edify the body. And neither should there be people speaking all over the church in tongues. If there's no interpretation, how does it build up the body of Christ? It does not edify the body. If you're speaking in a tongue, and if the Holy Spirit has given that to you, and if you're in a public setting, the same Holy Spirit, help me now, the same Holy Spirit that was with God when he said, let us make man in our image, the same Holy Spirit that is a part of the Godhead Trinity, the most intelligent being in the universe, you mean to tell me that that same Holy Spirit is going to go against the very word of God? I don't believe so. So if you happen to be in a public setting and you call yourself speaking in tongues and there's no interpreter, check yourself and compare it with the word of God. If there's no interpreter, then you need to be quiet. If there's no interpretation, it does not build up the body of Christ. Paul said in Corinthians that if there is speaking in tongues in a public setting, that there should be an interpreter. And there should be one person speaking at a time and wait for interpretation. That's what the Bible says. And you can do whatever you want to do, but I'm going to follow the word. And by the way, they were not just speaking in a babbling language that you or no one else could not understand. The Bible says that there were Jews from all over the known world at that time. 
There were all kinds of people in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. All kinds of people. And when they got filled with the Holy Ghost, they spilled out into the street. And all of the people that were there, Parthians and Medes, Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Pontus and Asia, Egypt, parts of Libya, adjoining Cyrene, visitors from all Rome, Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabs. They said, we hear them speaking not in a foreign tongue, we hear them speaking in our own tongue. How is it that you and I could have the power to speak in a language that we don't know without the impact of the Holy Spirit? They didn't have the app called Babel that teaches you and I how to learn brand new languages. They got a tweet from God. They got a text from him. He filled them with the Holy Ghost. And according to the text that I'm reading here, it says they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Remember my godmother told me when I was living in St. Louis, she wanted me to come to church with her. I said, okay. She said, listen, you got to come to church with me because my pastor is teaching us how to speak in tongues. I said, hold on. How can your pastor teach you how to speak in tongues when that comes from the Holy Spirit? Man does not have the power to, to teach you the language that the Holy Ghost imparts upon us. There are two types of tongues. God will allow and empower you to speak in a language that other people can understand for his glory, not yours or mine. And secondly, there is a language that humans cannot understand. That the Holy Spirit, who makes intercession for you and I, with the Father, speaks on our behalf. There is a language that's not even human, it's not of this realm. Our spirit is dwelling within us. That spirit connects with the Holy Spirit and begins to communicate with God in God's language. You and I might not understand, but the Spirit makes groan and intercession for us even when we can't speak for ourselves. We have the Spirit that will speak on our behalf. In 2014, I was in a coma for seven days. I did not even know where I was, but the Spirit of God began to groan and make intercession for me. And even when I was caught in between life and death, I couldn't pray for myself. I couldn't speak for myself. But that same spirit that God has filled me with, when I couldn't open up my mouth because there was a ventilator in it, that same spirit began to speak to my father and say, Father, this is your son. That same spirit said that he's been holding up the bloodstained banner for you for a long time. So I couldn't turn my face to the wall like Hezekiah, but thank God that I had the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside. And even when I could not open up my mouth and pray for myself, the Spirit made intercession for me and went up on my behalf. And even though I couldn't say, Father, I need thee, the Holy Spirit jumped in where I couldn't speak and began to speak in a heavenly language through my Father. The doctors can't figure it out, but that same Holy 
Jesus. The gift of the Holy Ghost is for all humankind, not for one race of people. If you notice, there were all kinds of folks in Jerusalem. And I got something I want to tell everybody to suck this in. We didn't need a slave ship to go to Africa to teach us who God was. Before we ever came to America on a slave ship, we were building libraries in Timbuktu. Before we ever moved about Christianity according to y'all's way, since I realized the Garden of Eden is in Africa, and I realized I've never seen no dirt that was not brown, beige, or black. How in the world could God create us in Africa and we not know who God is? In this place, white folks coming to Africa, bringing us back in chains for us to realize to receive this gift, this blessed gift of the Holy Spirit. You can do that by confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart for the Lord Jesus Christ that he died and rose again. The Bible tells us that all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. You see me in here in this beautiful robe, priestly. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Even after I got saved, I committed sin. And I have to pray and ask for forgiveness every day. My brother and sister, the Lord just wants to be in a relationship with you. It's not his desire that any flesh should perish. This is the most important part of this worship service. That some man, some woman, some boy or girl will receive Christ as their Savior. So if you want to be saved today, and listen, don't let the enemy lie to you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus right now. Whatever you've done, whatever you've done, Jesus died on the cross for that sin. Pastor, I, I got a problem. I got this problem with drugs. I don't know if he will Can he forgive me? He'll deliver you and forgive you. Pastor, I'm struggling with my flesh. I, 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 I'm in a marriage and I I got these women outside. I'm in a marriage. I got a, a man outside, and I'm not being faithful to my spouse. Can I come back from that? Absolutely. Yeah. He died for that. Yeah. What about that murderer sitting in prison doing time? And the enemy's beating you up because you took a life, telling me you can't be forgiven. Well, guess what? Jesus died for that. Yes, Moses was a murderer, and he became a deliverer. God wants to use you to be a deliverer. What about that person that's struggling with their sexuality? 
They got a wife and they also got a boyfriend. They got a husband, they got a girlfriend. They're struggling with that. Somebody got to them when they were young. They rested in them. The Lord can help you even with that. So my brothers and sisters, whatever your sin is, God's got deliverance and healing for you. So if you want to be saved and delivered today, repeat this prayer with me. Repeat the prayer with believe in your heart. It's not enough to say these words with your mind, but you got to believe it in your heart until you shall be saved. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Dear Lord, you can say this audible or silent. It's all about the heart. Dear Lord, forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me of my iniquity. Blot out my transgressions. Dear Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died and you rose again. I believe that you seated on the right hand of God the Father of God. Come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. I surrender my will to you. And my brothers and sisters, if you pray that prayer, right where you are, you are saved. If you took your last breath right now, you are guaranteed a seat in the eternal kingdom. Now I want to do one more thing, because this is very important. If you prayed that sinner's prayer and now you're saved, we want to give you the opportunity to become a member of this wonderful church called Death. So if you want to unite with this church, I invite you to go you can call us directly, area code 619-232-0510. 619-232-0510. Call and leave your name and a number to contact you. We'll have one of the ministers call you and welcome you into the household of faith. My brothers, God bless you and God keep you. I want to encourage everyone. This is a very volatile time in our church. It's a very volatile time in our country. Please, wherever you are, continue to be in prayer. And if you are protesting, please try to do it to the best of your ability in a peaceful manner without violence. Pray for your safety and your security and the security of your family. We have a survey that's coming out to the congregation. That survey is going to ask questions for our congregation. What do you need to do to feel safe enough to come back into the physical building? I know our governor has given us permission. Your president certainly wants you to go back into the worship center. But the Lord has provided this platform, and we're going to continue to utilize this until we are secure to come back into the church, and even after that, we will still be broadcasting. So God bless you, and God keep you as my prayer. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We thank you, God, for this day. The church is on fire. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his holy, holy spirit Rest through and abide each and every one of our hearts. May the people of God say amen. God bless you and God keep you. I love you all. See you next week. Same bad time. Same bad station. Have a wonderful week. Please be safe wherever you are. And stay tuned for the COVID-19 update immediately following service by Dr. G. God bless you and God keep you. Hello Bethel, I am Dr. Robert Gillespie on behalf of Pastor Vaughn, giving you your eighth coronavirus 2019 update. Today is May 23rd, 2020. We are now two and a half months since the World 
Health Organization declared SARS-2, otherwise known as COVID-19, a pandemic. This was done on March 11th, and then eight days later, our Governor Newsom declared a stay-at-home order. This was to protect our healthcare systems from being overwhelmed by this disease process. He outlined a four-stage approach to ending the stay-at-home order. When I spoke with you last two weeks ago, we were near the beginning of stage two. And at that time, it was my understanding it was going to take several weeks to months for us to get to a more advanced phase of stage two. This was very concerning because as all of you know, we're at a 30% unemployment rate here in San Diego. Furthermore, as I reported to you previously, many folks were not going to the doctor even when very ill, some dying before making it to the hospital. In San Diego County, it has been very reassuring that our incidence of infection and deaths has been downtrending. Our hospitals have been able to keep up with the volume. However, we still have concerns. As I've mentioned before, South Bay has a significant incidence of COVID-19 and continues to dominate the number of cases in San Diego County, though we have made some improvement. Our biggest concern is our neighbor, Imperial County. A couple of weeks ago, over 65 patients presented in one night to El Central Regional Hospital. Next door at Brawley, another 28 or so patients presented. This is truly a healthcare facility's worst nightmare. So as a result, they are still in a full stay-at-home order. They have the highest number in the state of California in Imperial County with 40 per 100,000 residents compared to Los Angeles, which is the second highest, which is all the way down to 15 per 100,000. In San Diego, we're about nine and a half per 100,000 residents. So what may have led to this, this spike in Imperial County. As was happening in South Bay, all along the border areas, because of the high incidence of disease in Mexico, they were overwhelmed and their hospital facilities were closed. Many of the American citizens who live in Mexico have been coming back to the United States to get treatment. Let's avoid any finger pointing. This is not a disease of race or citizenship. It's a disease related to exposure. For the most part in San Diego, remember, as is the entire United States, we have a low incidence of disease compared to the population. Over 95% of us still remain vulnerable. Keep in mind that African Americans, though, in San Diego County have fared well. That has not been the case statewide and nationwide, where a high inc higher incidence of death far outweighs our percentage of the population in African American populations. So we have to be vigilant. We know we still have to social distance greater than six feet. We still have to wear our masks to protect each other and washing our hands frequently is very important. Since African-Americans have a very high incidence of coexisting disease, we are at higher rates of death. It makes sense that as we all come back together, we are then at higher risk for having bad outcomes if we don't do the right things. We know that congregate living facilities, such as nursing homes, account for half of all deaths in San Diego County. As of yesterday, of the 242 deaths, 120 of those deaths were in such facilities, such as nursing homes. We have to remember a high percentage of hospitalizations that are not only the elderly, but patients between the ages of 20 and 49. While these younger patients don't typically die, some do, but many of them get exceedingly ill. We now know of a COVID-19 related illness that comes after infection from COVID-19 and the body overreacting to the infection and causing harm to the body, leading to high fever, chills, and a, large, a rash throughout the body. This is similar to a disease that we've described many years ago called Kawasaki disease. We had a recent case like this at Sharp Memorial Hospital when a 21-year-old young lady nearly died from this process with this inflammatory condition I just described. So remember, young people, this disease can have a major impact on you also, not to mention the transmission that can occur from young to old. There will be new guidelines for school and churches coming soon. As you know, 
President Trump declared churches essential services and encouraged the governors to open churches as soon as possible. While the vast majority of us want churches open as quickly as possible, we want this done safely. This cannot be motivated by political decisions because it will not protect any of us from getting infected. Currently, Pastor Vaughn is in the process of putting together a committee that will allow us to get our church open and running as soon as possible in a safe manner. You can visit the website countynewscenter.com and this will be provide valuable information on all the things I've just mentioned and much more. The county is in the process of hiring for the T3 program. What is the T3 program? That is the way that we will be able to test, trace, and treat patients and, I, and continue to move away from the stay-at-home order. Many of you might have a job opportunity, so you may want to go to websites that provide information on this, and we will be providing through the COVID-19 task force additional information on this project. It is very important that many of the people that are in this look like those in the community. Finally, I want you to look at this uh, last slide that will show you testing sites that are available. I encourage all of you to go out to get tested for COVID-19. It helps not only on a personal level, but for us to know what is the incidence of disease in San Diego County. In closing, I want to again encourage you, please adhere to the guidelines. Continue to eat healthy, exercise, take care of your bodies and your medical issues. Make sure you make your appointments if you haven't done so recently. And until next time, God bless you. Oh, yeah.